there's another really cool thing you can do. Uh, if we go in here to a Z sphere, let's go ahead and drag that on our canvas, go into edit mode, and we have a subtool here. That's uh, make poly mesh 3D so we can make this a collidable mesh. And we're also going to go in here to append and we're going to grab a plane 3D with that plane 3D selected. Let's go down here to geometry, dynamic subdiv. Let's go ahead and turn that on. Let's turn smooth subdiv down to uh, one and then crank that thickness up so we can kind of see it. Then hit W. I'm going to hold down shift and we're going to rotate it. And we're just going to put this right above the sphere. In fact, let's touch this sphere, uh, select it, and then uh, hit W and just scale the sphere down a bit. So we're going to have this plane collide with this sphere. Uh, so we'll select the sphere. We'll take this brush menu out of here. Uh, if you can double click these little arrows here to open the divider, go into dynamics, drag that white dot over here. Let's go ahead and turn on collision volume. It's going to calculate this as a collision volume, run the simulation, and there we go. Now you may be thinking, you know, as I'm running the simulation, there's some points in here I'd really like to capture, but I ran the simulation too long and that moment's passed. I wish I could rewind this just a little bit. Uh, well, you can. So underneath layers here, and you can see there's a record deformation animation. So go ahead and uh, undo what we did. And before we start recording this deformation, what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn this on. We'll go ahead and run that simulation and it's recording all these vert changes. So if I want to, in fact, I can hit B, C, K, that's going to go in our cloth hook and I can go through here and I can kind of pull this around and get what I want. And then again, I can rewind this and pinpoint any point in time, uh, again, based on those vert changes. So when I'm done recording, I'm just going to tap this and we're just going to throw that right on our desktop. We'll call this plain folds. And now it's done and I have a, an MDD file on my desktop. So now when I move this, uh, everything goes away. However, I can go back in here to import MDD double click that plane folds and now I have a layer here. Uh, I can go into my timeline, it opened up automatically, but you can go in here to your movie timeline. You can turn that on or off. And wherever I touch here in the timeline, that'll start the starting point of that MDD layer. So as I drag this through, you can go through here and now you can actually go through and play back again those vert changes that you made. So here's where I was starting to pull around with the cloth hook brush. But if you wanna go back and be like, okay, at this point, it was perfect. That's what I wanted to capture. You can just go up here and you can say clone that off into its own subtool here. You can come down here, you can say bake all, and now you have that exact perfect cloth. You can always go back to this one here. It still has your simulation layer turned on and all that good stuff. But now you have a baked version that you can take. Another cool thing about this is it's just taking that geometry. The dynamic stuff isn't being captured. That's all done kind of in post or on top of or separate from your original mesh here. So if I turn off dynamic, here's the mesh that's actually being deformed. So you can actually turn this on, you can turn smooth sieved up to two, you can go through here and play that animation, get smoother wrinkles, or, and, or you can turn on micro poly, give this chain mail, let's take that smooth subdiv down to a zero here. So now as you're playing this animation, it's gonna have that micro poly effect. If you just want the timeline to play, you can shift click, in the timeline, it's gonna tell you you need two points. Let's go through here, and it's gonna to wanna to play here to here. So now if I shift click in the timeline, it'll go through and play every frame. And I can also go over here and hit BPR render. And you know what, let's go ahead and give this a new material. And if I control shift click this now, it's gonna render out every frame uh, in BPR. So I can record this to a movie uh, with BPR running with shadows happening and all the cool stuff you want to have in, you know, if you go and watch the videos on my YouTube channel about putting in post and render settings and AO and shadows and all that stuff. You can go through here and record a nice BPR uh, movie uh, out of this. But we'll go ahead and hit escape and stop that. So that's a cool way where you can go through again and just kind of pinpoint exactly where that collision takes place. And on top of that geometry, you can update it and uh, modify it with different thicknesses different dynamic settings. We can make this even finer mesh here. We can change the micro poly out with whatever we want. We can render it. All sorts of really cool things you can do while utilizing that uh, recording deformation option.